Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Neshi Lokatz. Welcome to Star Nations Organization's main fan page, where I get to do this live stream once a week on Wednesday afternoon here in Tomo, Wisconsin, where I live. I was just checking my my feed because it looks a little a little choppy. Yeah, let's see. Um, Got to check, <laughs> making sure. We're doing okay. Yeah, it is a little choppy. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I have good internet. It's all green. So I'm not sure what that's all about. And my laptop is fully charged. Maybe I'll get better. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. So welcome everybody to the Spiritual Roundtable. I'm your host, Neshi Lokatz. And this particular live stream show is all about the deal, that weekly card draw that I do. I do it in the morning and um, asking my spiritual team what information, energy is important for us to know about this week that can help us with our soul growth, right? And so we get to take that information and have a spiritual conversation about it. And I got to tell you, it's one of my favorite things all week long is to sit, to come here and be with you guys and have a spiritual conversation. It's fun. We learn so much from each other too. So welcome everybody that's in the, the live chat. So glad you're here with me. And for those who will be watching by the recorded version, thank you so much for making time in your day to watch the recorded show. We appreciate it. And so let's see who's here. Let's see who's here. It looks like Rochelle's here. Yay, Rochelle's here. Hello, Rochelle. Good to have you in the house, lady. And look, Rob's here too. Hello, Rob. And Lynn's back. Hello, Lynn. Good to have you here. And Carol's here too. She says, hi, Rob and everybody. Good to have you guys here. Um, today is Wednesday, April 15th. Yeah. Usually, <laughs> there is no usual anymore, is there? <laughs> it's the unusual. Um, today would have normally been um, tax filing day, right? Yeah. And it's been pushed out to July. And from what I hear um, is that some people have actually gotten that stimulus payment in their bank account today. So if that was you, congratulations, and I hope that was very helpful to you and to your family. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we've gotten one or not. I don't usually take a look at that stuff until Paul mentions it, and it's like, oh, yeah, I should probably go out there and take a look at it. So, um, hey, Cindy's here, too. Hello, Cindy. It's good to have you here. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You know, I, I turned 60 in December. Yeah, so, yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, I was looking forward to it. Hey, Lynn, she says, I think that was supposed to be high all. Okay, it, I think so, too. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, Lynn. Um, yeah, and some of these ladies were here earlier today, earlier this morning with me for the morning meditation, um, the guided meditation for grounding, centering, and protecting that I do every morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. And today... Today, we took some extra time and did some drumming. Uh, we drummed prayers this morning. And I tell you what, that okay, I love drumming to begin with. But to, to be with you guys and to drum those prayers, it was something pretty special. Um, I added that on. We're going to be doing um, prayer drumming um, on Wednesday mornings and um, also Saturdays. Um, and after we do the grounded meditation, the guided meditation, and then we'll we'll take some time to do some drumming of the prayers. Yeah, it was good. Thank you, Rochelle. I forgot all about that. <laughs> so thank you for reminding me. Um, I did send it out to the groups and to, oh, I forgot the main page. We're at the main page. And I also forgot to send it out to those people that I promised that I would. Rut row, better do that. Okay. Um, let's see. Gotta do there. And Marie and Deb, Natalie, and Jocelyn, and Violet. Um, Annie, 
Cindy. And we are looking for, whoops, there we go. And we're looking for Angie. Angie. There we go. Good. Done. <laughs> done, done, done. All right. So, you know, today is all about the card draw, right? And um, I do know that um, the energy felt different yesterday morning, right? I, I was sharing with Rob last night that it that uh, the day started out for me, the energy felt different. It was like the determined, right? That was the word that I that I attached to that yesterday. And today the energy feels different again. And so um, it almost to me it felt uh, like um, like spring, like that that turning of that page or starting the new chapter kind of thing. And so um, yeah. Hey, Andrew's here too. Hello, Andrew. Good to have you here, guy. Good to have you here in the afternoon show. Rob says, it's snowing here. I thought you were going to keep that in Wisconsin. I didn't say that. I would have never said that. <laughs> um, it snowed here yesterday. It did. Um, you know, there's an old saying, right, about um, it's not really spring until the robin has had three snows on its tail, right, or something like that. Well, I think that poor little robin has more than three. I think he's up to five now. Um, so, so hopefully we're headed into warmer weather because it, it was cold. Like yesterday it was 19 degrees when I got up in April. That's not right. <laughs> hey, Marie's here too. Hello, Marie. <laughs> and Mary's here too. Hello, Mary. And look who else is here. Amy's here too. I'm so glad you could join us, Amy. Amy, Amy works and she works some pretty, um, early hours. And tag your it, snow tag. <laughs> yeah, you're that. That's for you, Rob. Because <laughs> Mar Mary's in uh, Ma Mary, you're in Wisconsin, right? Yeah, eastern part of the state. Yeah, I don't even know what the temperature is. It's 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 cold. Okay, let's get started with the cards because we have three of them, three cards, and they're all cards that we've had before. But they are in a uh, different, different order. Okay. So here we go. Here's the very first one. Oops. They're telling me, show the book. <laughs> so this is this is the deck that we're, we're still using. Sacred Spirit Reading Cards by Anna Stark. I haven't had gotten the nudge to, to move on to a different deck. So we're still using this one. Anna is from Australia. And so is the um, illustrator. Uh, Louis Dy uh, Dyer, D-Y-E-R. Okay, so when we're taking in the information, um, it's coming through the lens of, and the filter will say, um, of Anna. And Anna and Louis are both in a different continent. And so it's kind of nice to be able to get a different point of view, right? And then we get to um, send it through our own filters and to see what that message is for us, right? Okay, so here's the very first one. Yeah. Illuminate the shadow. Illuminate the shadow. Simplify the issue and focus on the solution. Focus on the solution. It's number 23. I mean, sorry, 21. Sorry, 21 in the deck. And we'll take a little closer look. Can certainly see the shadow, right? Here, you're you're looking at, I believe, uh, power animals or animal totems. Because you have a bird, possibly an eagle there. Looks like a wolf and an owl, right? In the shadow. Those eyes, right? Those eyes. And it kind of looks like near the nose, there is a bird coming in for a landing or leaving or something. You can see the wings. Maybe it's a bat. We don't know. The energy coming off the from the third eye up, lighter, 
brighter energy. But look at the eyes in the background, right? Almost like somebody was saying peacock feathers. And it almost looks like there's crystals in there too, doesn't it? Let's see if we can get the camera to focus. There we go. Very interesting information coming from this card. This is illuminate the shadow to focus on a solution, to simplify. Right? I mean, those eyes, right? They certainly capture your attention. Hmm. So what do we know about the shadow before we actually get into what the author has to say? You know, the shadow, without the shadow, we wouldn't have the contrast, right, of the light. Which helps us to um, maybe understand our life lessons as they come through. Um, some people put the shadow in um, a, a lower vibration, a negative vibration or frequency, right? And they see it as evil. When that may be true, there's always a possibility of that. In this sense, we're talking about our shadow selves because we all carry it, right? And our shadow selves are those aspects of ourselves that, you know, that sometimes we hide, right, in the dark. Those, those aspects of ourselves that we really don't want to show someone else. Right. Sometimes it's it's our out of balanced part of ourselves. And we all have it. It doesn't matter how long that you've been awake on your spiritual life. It doesn't matter how many times you've been around the spiritual block. Our shadow is here to help us with our life lessons. Many times it's the leading edge of that life lesson. Right. Hmm. Yeah. And so the harder sometimes we try to repress or suppress our shadow self, right, um, the more uncomfortable it comes because things start coming to the surface and we're, we try to ignore them or we try to push them back down. Right. And then they come back to the surface again. And, and it's not until we actually take a look at them to shine a light on them that we realize what are what's the message that's coming through with this. Right. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to do is encourage, encourage us to have courage to look at that shadow to examine that part of ourselves, right? Yeah. And, and <laughs> in, in the energy field that we find ourselves in for a month or more, six weeks, many of us have had the opportunity to slow down our life a little bit or to our, we we're completely taken out of our usual routine. Um, things were turned upside down or inside out, right? And so we were given a gift in that, that we have an opportunity to, to, to take a look at the shadow, to take a look at um, our lives, right? And that self-reflection. Even though you may have kids at home and you're homeschooling and you have like this much spare time <laughs> or, you know, like for me, right, uh, my my business is run out of the home. And um, and so, yeah, we have some even some changes here, although maybe not quite as dramatic as others. Um, work life, the routine has kind of been askew because I have to fit other things in. Right. That doesn't mean, though, that our life allows us those pockets of quiet time or time where we can actually have something when something comes up that we can actually look at it and say, at least say, I see you. I see you. 
or to be able to turn to our spiritual team and ask them for assistance, right? In, in the understanding or getting clarity around it. So we're all given this huge gift. How many people are actually taking advantage of it, stepping into it? That's a good question for us. So in the live chat, if you've, had, if you've taken advantage of the opportunity that's been given to us, have you? Have you? And it's okay if you haven't, but grand, great if you have, okay? Because um, we still have time. We still have time. Because this is all a part about the Great Awakening. This card that we got today is all about that. It was talking about the, going to the simpler solution, right? Focus on a solution and go as simple as you can. Many are at a turning point, a decision-making time. Right. We've had the time to be able to self-reflect. And as we move closer and closer to um, that, that next step where we're going back into our workplace, right, that um, the kids are going, maybe not going back to school, but they're having more of a regular routine, right? Yeah. And so that was the time. Now's the time. Last night in my, my show last night, I said, now is our time, the healers and the spiritual seekers. This is our time. In so many ways, this is our time. For those that really um, know how to use their gifts, um, especially the healers, now is their time to really step into it completely, fully. Right. And if you're just waking up to your gifts or just learning and remembering how things go together with that, now is your time to do that. Now is the time. And I believe this card has a lot to do with that. Illuminate the shadow. Illuminate the shadow. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at what you guys are saying in the chat. All right. Hey, Margo's here too. Hello, Margo. Glad you're here. And they're talking about the temperature. <laughs> and Cindy's asking, how many animals? Well, let's see. How many do you see? I see at least a bird and a wolf, right? And an owl, right? Possibly a bat, or it could be a bird landing. Right? Yeah, so how many do you see? How many do you sense? Because we travel. You know, when we do our soul traveling, um, when our soul goes from one dimension to another, you know, doing the experiencing, especially during dream time, we're never alone. Never, ever are we alone. And so our power animals will actually be, go through the dark with us too. Right? So when, if we need help, they're there. When we finally ask them, <laughs> For help. They're there. Right? Rochelle says that looks scary. Okay. But you know, why does it look scary for you? That's the question. Lots of energy. Is it too much energy? Or is it the intensity of the energy? Carol says Phoenix rising. I saw that too, especially in the top of the head. All that look like flames, right? Rob is saying there is no light without shadow unless we are the light. We are not. The argument is basic physics. The solar mystery is an allegory. Yeah. 
there's so many layers to it. See, this is what I love about spiritual conversations, right? Because we get to take a look at that and look at it from here. And then we turn it a little bit and we talk about it from that direction and from another direction. And then pretty soon you're taking in information that's making you go, I wouldn't have thought about it that way. Or, wow, that feels like a truth to me, right? So thank you, Rob, for, for your comment. Deborah saying, hello, Yvette Neshi Lokats. Hello, Deborah Clark Clemens. <laughs> it's always good to have you in the house. Margo says, we now have the time to contemplate. If we look at some of the things we have kept us in the shadows, we could deal with them. Yes. Cleanse ourselves in the process. Let go of things that bring us down. Yes. Yes. Identify, right? Identify what needs another layer of healing, releasing, right? What do you want to fill that void that you just created? Right? So we have the opportunity to raise our vibration, to raise our frequency, right? Yeah, good one. Thank you, Margo. Hey, and Bree's here too. Hello, Bree. It's good to have you in the live chat. Bree is one of our new community members. Lynn says, definitely has taken a lot of time. Those eyes are a little creepy to me. They're watching, right? You're being seen. Even though, even though there's aspects of ourselves that we would like to keep in the dark, we don't want people to know about that aspect of ourselves. It's still being seen by spirit. It's still being seen. So we may as well bring it to the surface, right? And learn about it. What is that? And why do I why do I keep shying away from it? Carol says, I have been talking with people about the opportunity we have now to reset our patterns. Reset. It's brand new. So many people were literally, literally taken out of their daily routine and plopped someplace where they didn't they had to create a new daily routine right and it took some time because they had to get through the shock and to tell you the truth carol doesn't it feel or seem like um it's the it's the steps of grief that many of us are going through right yeah and so yes reestablishing um our relationships with our family members um, establishing brand new routines, right? Yeah. Margo says, I have and find it very interesting and scary. The scary part is for me, okay, and this is just my two cents. The scary part is asking yourself, what is that that's scaring me? Why does it feel scary to me? Because really it's about yourself, right? Yeah. So what part of yourself scares you? What part of yourself is in, in the shadow? Do you express that part of yourself through your shadow, right? That's another good question. Deborah is saying, oh yes, big stepping into it. I've realized when I pray about something good to come out of a situation and it isn't my better good as I see it, I hope that karma can um, karma be onto the other. Sometimes it's not the best interest or in love for the greater good. I'm learning a lot and being different. Well, good for you, Deborah, to actually recognize that, to see it, right? And to feel it. Yeah, that's good. And thank you for sharing that. Because I think, you know, there's a lot more people that are going through that. Carol says there are more in the hair. Yeah. You mean the eyes? Yes. See if we can get the camera to focus. Here we go. Right. 
right? Yeah. It's that self-reflection, I think. And sometimes, you know, and we have to admit that there's some people out there that this might have been the first time they've spent this much time with themselves, <laughs> right? Without, you know, uh, filling that time and that that with, with to do, to do this or to do that, because you can only watch so much Netflix, you can only watch so many uh, YouTube videos, right, in a month. <laughs> Rochelle says, Margo and I are neighbors. You are? Well, that's something. That's cool. Deborah says, I really exposed it, didn't I? <laughs> But that was good. It's good. You shined your light in that darkness. Intensity. Pretty intense, right? Rob says, I do have one, one once in a while. Ah, why not? Cindy says, I'm surprised how an, emo how an emotion can be so strong and how fast I can release it. Because once, once you recognize it and you name it, right? And then you make the decision to release it. It can happen in a breath. It can take as long as you want to, to draw it out, right? Yeah. We, we have a little bit more input into that than I think than we sometimes recognize. All right. Yeah. Cindy says, grief is close to change. Yes, it is. It's all about that change is that when you have no control over it, right? Bree says, I could stare at that card forever because I see so much in it. I know, right? Wait till we get to the other one. <laughs> and how they kind of go together to give us that message. Rob said, I had a major spiritual breakthrough this week. You did? Part of the fear was that I was not ready. We spoke a little of that last night. I realize that this is the catalyst to, catalyst to bring it in. Yes. Yes. And really, you know, Rob, it, it it's to face that fear because some people have actually mentioned that a few times. It's scary, right? And whatever that scariness is for you, that fear is for you. Because remember, there's only really two emotions, love and fear. So if that fear comes up is to, to recognize it, to acknowledge it, and then ask your team to help you to understand it. What do I have to do to release it? Do I have to heal something? Do I have to face something? Right? And then do what you have to do to get it done. Right? Because it's all about application now. All about application so that you can free up that space, that energetic space, where your gifts reside. And so that you can start experiencing your gifts even more, even more. Hey, Lisa, she says, I'm sliding in. <laughs> Good. All right. So let's, let's find out a little bit about what the author meant about this card, okay? She says, when we understand our shadow, we can fully appreciate the light. We must have both aspects within our spirit to have a meaningful life. The beauty and simplicity of life. Once we remove fear and personal doubt, it makes room for love, confidence, and motivation. Reclaiming your personal power. Reclaiming your personal power. And sometimes that's scary, right? Our shadow self highlights the need to place ourselves first. When we're stuck within our shadow side, we're unable to see the light of day. We become clouded and foggy with confusion, often forgetting gratitude and compassion through our own selfish moments. Illuminating the shadow is, is to fully understand our personality and subsequently understand the shadow in others, enabling us to be more considerate of another's, another person's hardships and developing empathy with and compassion for other people. 
So right now, you are encouraged to illuminate the sections of your personality that are working against your situation. Accept that these challenging aspects are a part of you. Embrace them. Love them. And plan how to achieve a form of balance and make this part of your psyche ultimately working for you. Now is the time to focus on a resolution instead of ju just on the problem or the challenge. Acknowledge your current circumstances and focus on how you can achieve a positive outcome. Now is the time to get your personality in line with the conscious thought. Once you grow your understanding of your unique personality, you can begin to realign your life to nurture and support your goals and personal interests. So really, it, it's about balance. It's shining the light on those aspects of ourselves, right? To do our inner work, to face the fears. Because remember, uh, just on the other side of your fear is your most heartfelt desires. And I, I really feel like this is, this is letting us know is that we have some work to do, but we also are creators. We're co-creators. So we need to, to um, free up that energetic space to bring in that vibration that's a bit higher, the frequency higher, right? Aligning ourselves. Balancing ourselves. The affirmation is, I effortlessly create peaceful solutions with my personality. Hmm. It's very interesting. That we're being asked to focus on the solution, right? Rather than staying in the cause of something, to recognize, to acknowledge that it would that the cause, but not to get caught up into it and blocked or stuck there. But turn your attention to the most simplest solution, and you know, shine the light. And whatever darkness is there. Because who knows? Maybe you'll shine the light on, on your solution. Hmm. Very interesting, isn't it? All right. Lynn. Lynn is saying, I know that there is no going back to the old normal. That's right. We need to decide how we're going to move forward. It's, a, it's strange because so many people just want to get back to work in what they thought was normal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because there, that's, I think, a two-legged thing, don't you? A human thing. That um, even though we might have found it um, not pleasing or uncomfortable, it was something we were used to. <laughs> Right. And we're we're standing in the 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 doorway. And beyond the doorway is the unknown. And so it makes us apprehensive. Right? Some of us. <laughs> Others of us see it as an adventure. And um the possibilities of co-creating something really fantastic right that's me that's that quadruple sag in me okay but there is there is that um yeah wanting needing some sort of normal right cindy says i find ego getting in my way yeah well and it's there to help us to learn 
Yeah. And Carol says we need to need to envision what we want the solution to hold. And really, it has a lot more to do with the feeling. What? Do, how do you want to feel in that? Right. Yeah. And Rob says also, Manly P. Hall famously stated that no solution exists on the same plane that caused the problem. Evolution is necessary for the solving of problems. Yes, it is. And to, to look at it from another perspective, right? Another direction. All right. Um, that was Illuminate the Shadow. And the next one. Oops, oops, oops. Let me go to this one. Hmm. Astro Travel. Now, in this card draw, when I do the card draws with my team, the, the message, the major message is in that first card and the subsequent cards support and help us to understand the message of that first card. Okay. So the second card is about astral travel and it's a three. Now the first, the first card, right, was the 21, which is a three. And this is the third card in the deck. There's something to that. <laughs> Astro travel. Caution needed. We're being asked to observe, notice our surroundings. Okay. We are all capable of astro travel. Did you know that? Every single one of us, because we're spirits in a physical body. And so when this physical body needs rest, and hopefully she's getting eight hours of uninterrupted sleep, that doesn't happen. <laughs> the spirit, my soul, gets to travel to different places, different realms, different dimensions, doing work, our soul work, right? My color is going in and out. Did you see that? Funny. Okay. So with astro travel, your, your soul already knows every possible answer to a question that you have. You already know that, right? Our souls are thousands of years old, right? We have more wisdom that we haven't even tapped into yet. And we're being given a time and a place that we can actually access that. And that is this time that we're, that we're in right now. Our soul, when traveling, travels to, if you will, in a shamanic sense, the upper world, the lower world, and the middle world. The middle world is the spiritual realm right here in our present time. Okay. So while we are in our awake time, our daytime, we're taking in a whole lot of information. Every second, we're taking in information of all kinds. The kind that we see with our physical eyes, the kind that we hear with our physical ears, right? But we're also taking in a lot of information in the unseen, such as all that light language, right? And our soul is already taking that in, already knows what to do with it, doesn't need a translator <laughs> in order for us to understand it in the physical world, in the physical sense, we do need a translator and our translator is our soul. Right. Mm -hmm. And our spiritual team can help us with that. Help us to understand, get some clarity around it. Right. Helps us to uh, bring in the resources that we need for it. And in this particular card, looking at it, can you see the flower of life behind him? Actually at his crown. 
right? Astro travel. And I think that this is also about discerning. That when we talk about discerning, and you've heard me say it how many times in the last three or four months, maybe even longer than that. Discerning is when we connect with our higher self, our soul self, to say, what's really going on here, right? And if you're an empath and you're doing that, you're sensing about what the truth. Is somebody telling the truth? Right. So in that discerning, our soul is giving us the information, helping us um, in the physical world make those decisions or to understand something, right? And so this, what this card reminds me of is that connection to our, our higher self, that part of us that does that astral traveling. Yeah. And where here's where, where I feel the caution is needed. Is that in the protection that we ask for, right? Through all time and space and all dimensions. Our soul never travels anywhere by itself, by ourselves. Never, ever, ever. There are um, team members on our team, our spiritual team, that are assigned to travel with us when we do our astral traveling. We're never alone. We're never alone. Even if we don't ask them to go with us, they go with us anyway. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> but, you know, it's still up to us to turn to them and ask for help. For instance, in one dream not too long ago, I was in this hallway and walking down the cell, and it was semi-lit. And I'm talking to my team, and I'm going, what is this? You know, and is it safe? And they were saying, it's as safe as it can be. I said, well, if it's safe and there's nothing that I need to pay attention to, let's really move as quickly as we possibly can through the hallway, right? And as we're doing this, the hallway kept getting longer and longer and longer and longer. So it wasn't, we really weren't reaching the end until we noticed that there was, there was um, other hallways that off that main hallway. Then we had to choose which direction we were going to go into. But uh, asking my spiritual team, this is my soul self asking my team, all right, so this is safe, <laughs> right? We know that it's safe. So how fast can we go? Let's go really fast, right? And my conscious self is get, gathering the information from it in that dream recall. We're going to talk about that on Sunday. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Astro travel. It says, astro travel can be described as a willful out-of-body experience allowing a person to observe their physical surroundings. Entering the gateway to the astral travel plane, our astral realm with intention is a careful practice that must be aligned with intention, clarity, and soulful purpose. And so in other words, this is what my grandpa used to tell us, is that that's not a playground. You, you know what you have to go and do. Go and do it get it done, and come back. You're not meant to hang out there. It's not a playground. <laughs> In other words, get the work done and come home. It says, a sacred portal is to hidden realms. Accessing the astral body allows you to travel and experience different realms of consciousness and universal experiences. With any astral travel, it is recommended to have a travel buddy with you, such as an ascended master and angel, for added spiritual safety. Primarily, an astral experience allows individuals to be an observer. To be an observer. <laughs> astral information and experiences 
are affected by fear-based thoughts and energy frequencies. Keep your vibration high and alert your senses to any unwanted energetic connections that can influence you in a negative and spiritually abusive way. Right now, you are being asked to keep your spiritual radio tuned to listen to unwanted interference. Observe your surroundings and be aware of the manipulation by others through a psychic energy, speech, and planned social meetings. Caution is required in all areas of communication. Keep sensitive information confidential. The affirmation is, I am divinely protected. My soul is safe to explore my path with ease and grace. So with this particular card, when I sat with it, I really felt um, that, yes, we need, we need to have some caution, yes. But to come from a place of fear isn't in our best interest or our highest good, right? Because we can create the one thing that we're afraid of. <laughs> How many of us have done that already, right? We know that doesn't work. But I think it's also about how we discern information for ourselves. Because we have a lot of information coming to us from many different sources about the virus and what we should do or should not do in many different ways. Everything from science, through politics, through education, through your auntie, <laughs> Who's got home remedies, right? I think that it's also a very good exercise in remembering how to discern for ourselves and how to trust our own intuition, right? And so in that first card, it was all about healing and releasing the fear, right? So that we can hear the messages a lot clearer when we're grounded and we're coming from a place of love, when we're shining the light in those dark places, right? I think, I think we're being really encouraged to, to sense, feel, see the information in, in its many, many different forms in order for us to have a clear and to make a clear decision, and, and also to what we want to create next, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of disinformation out there. A lot of misinformation out there. And so we have to remember how to discern for ourselves what is meant for us, right? What's the truth? What's the truth? Very interesting. We've got one more card to do. But I'm gonna I want to see what you guys are saying here. Um all right, I, I kind of lost my place. All right, here's Rob. Oh no, we did that one. Sorry, Rob. We did that one. Oh, that's Arabic? That's kind of pretty. I, I've seen it before, but it really is a pretty language, I think. Oh, and letting us know that you speak English. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Welcome to the show. Rob is saying, be, beware of crosstalk and put on a side band filter if you need to. <laughs> you know, it's a part. Here's a part about being an empath. Okay. And we're going to talk a little bit more in depth on this on the 26th um, for the class. But it, it's, an, it, it's, an, it's a language. And so we get to hear what's really being said in so many different ways. And the emotions is one of them. Right? And so when we are reading somebody and their message, they may be saying one thing meaning something completely different and hiding something else, right? And so, you know, it's just, I think we're being reminded. That's the feeling I have, I, that we're being reminded to really discern 
the information that's coming to us. Okay. Yeah. Sensitive material. Yes, exactly. Rabbi saying a bit of, uh, of a confession, but I spent a significant portion of my 30s getting drunk and listening to conspiracy theories. I never thought that would come in handy. Interesting times indeed. Yeah. And here's something that I truly believe, Rob, is that everything that we've experienced in our life is meant for our soul growth. And it comes in whatever lessons that was or that experience is needed for our soul growth. Everything. Everything. Did you know that when I was a sophomore in high school was the very first time that I was actually on the radio? I actually had, I was a co-host to a, a high school show on our local radio. Who knew back then that I would have a company that does live stream shows and we've done blog talk radio and all kinds of stuff, right? So, you know, everything that we've experienced is meant for our soul growth. And to utilize it. So good for you that you have that experience that you can tap into, right? Lynn is saying, I still feel like the truth was we, we could not go on like this and Grandmother Earth needed to rest and heal. We didn't listen, so now we have been forced to stop and think. Well, that certainly is a layer of it. it certainly is. See, this is, we're multidimensional beings. And so every experience we have is multidimensional, right? And so, yeah, we, we are her children and we're being told to clean up our rooms and we haven't done it. What mother would keep that up without doing something about it? Right. And grandmother earth is self-healing. You know, um, if she didn't want us here, she wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. We just wouldn't be. If we don't, um, if our frequency, our, um, yeah, if our vibration doesn't match hers, we're not here. Our brain literally <laughs> is a part of her. We match her, her frequency. We are her children. Yeah. So, you know, absolutely. Um, I think that it's it was a time to reset. A time for that self-reflection. You know, how many people are going to want to go back to the way they used to work? You know, when they know what it's like to work from home now and that it can actually be done. <laughs> you know, it's going to change a lot of things. It really is. So thanks for that, Lynn. Uh, and Kimberly's here. Hello, Kimberly. <laughs> exactly. Divine timing is good. And Martina's here too. Hello. She says, I just got off from work. I was hoping for meditation. That's in the morning. But you know, it's recorded. You can you can catch the recording of it. Um, yeah, that's at 10 a.m. Central Time in the mornings. Okay. Here's the third card. Get ready. <laughs> Soul Fragments. Soul Fragments, number 33. Number 33 in the card deck. Let me get the camera to focus. Soul Fragments. Balance will be restored. Reclaim your inner power. Right, so let's take a look at this. Look at all that red. Can't quite make out the eyes. The light behind him. Or her. Soul fragments. Balance will be restored. Reclaim your inner power. You know, and without reading what the what the author has to put into this, 
this time frame that we have where our life is completely different, our routines are completely different. Some of us have found a new daily routine, right? I had to, because <laughs> you may have children and they need a certain routine, especially if you're homeschooling, right? But we're actually in that reflective time and realizing what, what is really necessary. What do I really want? Right? There's a piece in there that is about calling those aspects of ourself back home. We do that every day in our meditations, don't we? I ask you guys to call your name in all four directions. To, to call back to you aspects of yourself so that you can be as fully present in the moment as you possibly can be. That is calling back those soul fragments, parts of you that are in spending a lot of time in the past, reminiscing, trying to get something back that happened, that occurred in the past, right? And then there's those of us that spend a lot of time in the future and trying to um, figure out what that unknown is, right? And then you also have the actual soul fragment loss, the soul loss that happened during a very traumatic period of your life where a part of you stays in that trauma, right? And so there's a whole lot of healing that happens around that. And so when we call those aspects of ourselves back that we can get back on our own, we're not just present, but we're more whole, right? So that is what it means to have, uh, to have balance restored and to claim our inner power, right? Because we're more whole. So, I, you know, my feeling is that this particular card, this third card, how it how it um, supports that first card, right, is to be as present as you possibly can be. And if you need help being present, you need a soul retrieval done, there's lots of people out there now that can do those that kind of work. Discern for yourself which healer is the best one for you, right? Yeah. So I think I really get the feeling that spirit is helping us to, to understand the importance of being fully present, being fully present so that, so that when we're illuminating those shadow parts of ourselves, right? To simplify and to focus on a solution that we're connecting to our higher self, our soul self, discerning. And in order to do that in the best way possible is that we have to be as present and as full of our, of our own soul, our own aspects as possible so that we can do that, that really good discerning. Yeah. So here's what the author has to say about this card. She says the life, of our soul is infinite. And while aspects of the self are never truly lost, they can be they can separate through times of trauma, grief, separation, loss, or refusing to deal with an issue. Like being home. <laughs> right? The psyche's self-preservation causes this illusionary disconnection as it chooses to distance itself from the situation in question. These fragments are merely in places our consciousness has chosen to forget, to spare the emotional turmoil from an intense emotional experience. Recalling these fragments with love, healing, and understanding allows the soul to continue moving forward without the individual feeling stuck in the past or unable to get over an issue or an event. 
empowering, and liberating. Retrieval is recommended if you feel you are missing parts of yourself. Right? So right now, your soul needs to reclaim a part of that it's missing, a missing memory. Past trauma that is being held within you is crying out to be healed. Through recollection, you can be able to see the truth and the situation for what it is. Fear-based experiences need to be addressed now. Reclaim your power. The affirmation is, I am the master of my own mind. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to move on. <laughs> Told you, big, that net three, all those threes, ascended masters, in some, some respects, in some cultures, it's the a triple goddess, right? Mother, maiden, crown. And three is a creation number. Three, six, nine are creation numbers. And that's what we have. Three, six, nine. Right? Tell you what, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Not if I tried. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. Kimberly was there and then Martina. Um, Martina says, threes are my number. Yes. So that message is huge for you, right? Absolutely. And Lynn says, love that. Balance will be restored. Yes. Balance will be restored. We just have to remember what balance feels like. Because so many of us have forgotten what balance feels like because we live our life so much out of balance, right? Yeah. Kimberly saying, shared with love. Yay, thank you, Kimberly. Sally says, wow, the three cards together. What a beautiful message, isn't it though? I know. When you should have seen it was a Kodak moment when I pulled those three cards this morning. So I'm going to show you all three cards. We're at the top of the hour. Um, and so we know that the best way to take in the information from all three cards is to be grounded, right? And so most of you were in the meditation this morning, but if you didn't ground yet today, that's okay. Um, just take a moment and ground to grandmother earth okay um because when we sh when i show you the, the these cards what we're going to do is we're going to ask our spiritual teams to come in they're already here we're just turning our attention to them and asking them for help okay asking them to help us to take in as much of the information that's optimal for for us individually and with as much clarity as optimal Okay. All right. So take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, calling to your spiritual team to come to you, your full team, and asking them for, for their assistance and bringing in the information from these cards, from spirit, that's um, important for you to know in an optimal way, in an optimal amount, with as much clarity as possible. Okay. All right, so here we go. Let's see. <laughs> Got to get these right. All right, so um, this card was the first card that was drawn. Illuminate the shadows. Focus on the solution, right? And then it was the middle card. Oops, oops. The middle card, which was Astro Travel. Right. Now it's proceed with caution that we need to have um, discernment. And then what we did was we got this card, which was soul fragments to be here as completely as you possibly can. And that everything is going to be OK. Right. We, and the solutions that, that you focus on for yourself is for them to be as simple as possible. 
simplicity, right? See if we can get everything in the, the frame here. There we go. Yeah. That's a lot of energy to these cards. It's a lot of information, isn't it? Yeah. I think that we're, Spirit is really telling us to pull it together, <laughs> pull yourself together. And really, you know, at a soul level, we already know exactly what we need to know. We just have to put ourselves in the position to hear it, see it, feel it. Right? To do whatever, what is necessary to remove the fear, to heal it, release it. Yeah. And to be open to the possibilities. Yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, Mark was saying, wow, I know, right? Very powerful. And Rob is saying the Trinity is also three. That's right. Uh, in hoc sigo, signo, it's the Osarian mystery, I Isis, Horus, and Set. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You're welcome, Lisa. You're very welcome. So, um, you know, here's where I usually let you guys know what's going on, right, in Star Nation. So we have another show coming up for you today that is Soul Connections with Polly Jo LeBay. The front part of the show is all about healing. So if you are looking to heal something that came up with these cards, join us tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, it's uh, that first half hour or so is about healing work. And the second half is about divine messages. So if you enjoy getting a mini card reading, um, you can join us for that. That's 7 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, that's Polly Jola Bay and Soul Connections. Um, Thursday, Thursday's Polly Joe's other evening show, which is Chakra, Chakra Sessions at 7 p.m. And it's also at 4 p.m. is, is Life Wisdom with Ed Langan. <laughs> And I don't remember what Ed's talking about, but I'm sure it's going to be good. Um, yeah. And here's one other thing I wanted to share with you. And that is this. Now, we have a couple of online classes coming up. I just talked to Polly Joe this morning. And I tell you, this class, when we designed the, these classes and how they were going to roll out, we didn't know about COVID-19 at the time. We didn't know where we were going to be right in, in that space. Um, and so she's going to be helping us with that co-creation and how our inner child is going to be so helpful with that. So that class is coming up on the 23rd. You can still register for that. You'll also get the two previous classes by Maureen Mann and Ed Langan. And then my class is coming up on the 3rd, May 3rd. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a set of four. <laughs> it's a set of four. Yeah. And we'll give you the, the link for that, too. Just go to starnations.org and go to the Academy page. And uh, the information will be there. And um, on the 26th is Thriving as an Empath During the Great Awakening. We have been doing a whole lot of work as empaths and so this class is really is about not not just identifying if you're an empath i already did that for the free mini class but this one is all about your gift and how do you use your gift what do you do with all those emotions that that you're feeling what are you supposed to do with them <laughs> and then how to get rid of them right and so it's a lot of it's going to be about self-care too. So hopefully you'll be able to join us for this one. Um, that's Sunday, April 26th at 6 p.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Um, and we have some special pricing on this particular class. So it's very, very, very affordable. Okay. <laughs> All right. There. I think, um, I think we got it. Hang on just a second. We're going to put this up. Because I want to grab that and put that in comments. Here we go. 
good. So hopefully you guys will be able to join us for one of those classes or both of them. And I'm going to get rid of that. There. Excellent. All right. So one last trip through the chat. And we have Martina saying, yes, I love the healing part. Me too. Lynn saying, thank you. A lot of interesting, useful information, Jay. I do believe so. And I thank my team for that because they brought through that information. Um, they just gave me the cards for it. And Martina saying, when is angel therapy? Okay, angel therapy um, live stream show with Maureen Mann is on Thursdays, the second and um, fourth Thursday. Thursday. Third second and fourth Thursday. That's it. And um, her class that has already occurred is recorded. And if you um, register for the full set of classes, you'll get the recorded class as a part of that registration. So if that's what you're asking about. Okay. All right. Martina says, I believe we all have gifts. Yes, we do. We have many, many, many. We have more than just one, right? Individually. And we all have them. Isn't that cool? Yep. There's the link. And Rob is saying, thank you. You're welcome, Rob. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being with me this afternoon for the Spiritual Roundtable. And um, I look forward to seeing you again for the Spiritual Roundtable next week, Wednesday at 3 p.m. for the next group card draw and spiritual conversation. And thank you so much for being a part of the spiritual conversation. We had a really good conversation today, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. So, Bama Mina, that's Potawatomi 4, until we see each other again. I love you guys. <laughs>